Well, good morning and welcome. I guess there couldn't be a better weekend for having a reading that's about a storm on a lake. And with Storm Dudley and Storm Eunice, we've been reminded about the sheer power of storms and the strength of the wind and the destruction that it can cause. And I guess the disciples were very mindful of that power of nature as they were caught out on the lake in the midst of the storm. And yet in it, they discover the one who even the wind and the waves obey. So let's go and join our service. Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to you this morning. Morning too, and welcome to those who are joining us online. Good to have you with us this morning. I must admit, the, uh, if you've seen from the film, it was an absolute gift to have Storm on the Lake uh, this weekend. But we were up in Darlington, and they completely missed it. We got a bit of snow, uh, but nothing in the way of high winds. So we couldn't go out and film with sort of a great storm blowing uh, in the background. But it is a reminder, isn't it, of as we see the strength and the power of nature, also reminded of the God who is Lord of all creation. So, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. When Anita chose the first hymn, it was Morning Has Broken, and that also applied to our fence and probably one or two greenhouses and various other things over this weekend. But it's a song that speaks of the joy and the wonder of God's creation. So let's stand and sing together, Morning Has Broken. Let's remain standing as we pray together. Almighty God, you bring to light things hidden in darkness and know the shadows of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Do sit down. So we come to our confession. So just a moment to be still before God, remind ourselves of those things for which we seek his forgiveness in our lives. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So let us bring our sins into the light and confess them in penitence and faith. And so we confess together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, cleanse you from your sins, that you may see the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What we say together, the collect for today. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Colleen will read our, our Old Testament reading. And he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now my bone of bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why man leaves his father and his mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Thank you, Colleen. And our gospel reading is read for us by Keith, and it's up on the screen. Reading from Luke chapter 8, <clears throat> verses 22 to 25. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake, so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. 
He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked the disciples. In fear and amazement they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Well, I was preparing this, a storm Dudley was just getting ready. I came into the house and looking out the window, saw that the bird table was still standing. So I went out to lay it on its side, but too late. In those few seconds, a gust had done the deed for me. I'd just been out with Alfie on Crouch Hill and met other dog other dog walkers who, who all commented that Dudley was on the way. Interesting how the naming of storms now make them somehow more real. And maybe we do more to prepare for their arrival. Even here in Banbury when the forecast was that the north was likely to be the hardest hit again. And Storm Eunice, which followed on, was as we now know, more ferocious. And even Banbury Station got onto the national news. Back in August, I was driving our three-year-old grandson, telling him we were going on holiday. When his voice immediately piped up from the back of the car, the beach, the beach, we're, we're going to the beach. Um, there's not a lot of beach in the Yorkshire Dales. But I told him, well, no, but there's a river. No, the beach, the beach, came the reply. Clearly, if we're going on holiday, the beach and the sea, it is. In his, uh, his mind, there is no other form of holiday. And maybe some of you might agree with that. But for a child, a place to play in and buy and maybe go crabbing. For many, the sea is endlessly fascinating, always changing with the light playing on it, beckoning and yet at times, as we know, also threatening. And as we know, a number of Jesus' disciples made their living from the sea of Galilee, a massive lake as fishermen. And so one day Jesus says to them, let's go to the other side of the lake. This account appears in Matthew and Luke as well, with slightly different details. And in Luke, Jesus doesn't say why they're going to the other side of the lake. He doesn't give a reason, but clearly he knew he had a plan in mind. So the first thing that we notice is that Jesus took the initiative. He decided, let's go to the other side of the lake. He knew what he was doing. And the second thing that we may notice is that the disciples choose to join in with what Jesus was suggesting. They had a boat, why not? Yet while they were sailing to the other side of the lake, they found themselves in danger. As the sudden storm broke over them and they were in danger of the boat being swamped and going under. This lake, a source of food and income, which they knew so well, became a source of anxiety and fear. What at one moment was a gentle breeze became a raging storm, which even the fishermen hadn't seen coming. I think this is an account that many of us can relate to, not because we've all been in that situation, but because we've all experienced storms in one form or another. A bit like going 
to the other side of the lake. We're in the midst of doing something. We know what we're doing. We know where we're going when when we assume all that is plain sailing and then the squall, the storm comes upon us and catches us unprepared, knocks us off balance. We really hadn't seen it coming. And of course, COVID has done that to all of us. But I wonder if you've had that happen. I'm sure you have in other circumstances. I know last year I was looking forward to opening the church for the first time since, since the Christmas before. And it was going to be on Easter Day. And then I broke my foot a few days beforehand. Church still opened, but I was facing weeks of my foot in plaster sat up or getting around on crutches. After all those weeks of lockdown, not what you would call brilliant timing. But maybe for you, it's been illness. Results of tests that bring unwelcome news. An accident. Something happening to someone close to you. Or to jobs. Or your home. And at times like that, we want to do something. But there are times when we're out of control of events. It's bigger than us. It threatens to engulf us. And that's where the disciples were. Experienced fishermen were amongst them who knew the lake well. They were out on it night after night. But they were feeling out of their depth, quite literally. And then they realised that the one person who could do something was there with them, unbelievably asleep. Or perhaps just waiting for them to turn to him for help. And he got up and he rebuked the wind and the raging waters and the storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. And maybe there are times when we sense that God is asking that of us. Where in the midst of whatever is going on for us, where is our faith? The fishermen were so caught up with what was happening and how they could neither save themselves nor the boat that a presumably panic set in. Though they did ask Jesus for help. And I wonder, I wonder what they thought would happen. I wonder what they thought Jesus could do about it. Maybe join with them and scoop water out. Certainly not that Jesus would stand up and address the storm and that calm would be restored. And maybe that's the third thing that we notice, that when we join in with what God is doing, it's not always going to be plain sailing. Things may go wrong. Storms may well come that will appear to threaten or leave us feeling overwhelmed that we just can't do it. We can't continue. But whatever we're doing, if we turn to the one who can help us through this, to the one who can bring that peace, that peace that passes all understanding, which may not necessarily bring whatever is overwhelming us to the end, but may bring us a calm that helps us to face whatever. We may too, like those disciples, discover more about the nature of God and about who he is. 
For the disciples in the boat, their fear of the storm turned to fear and awe of Jesus. Who was this man? This man that commands the wind and the waves to obey him. They knew he was a healer. They knew he was a teacher. And now they began to see that he was so much more. It was early days, but their faith was growing in them. They still had a long way to go before they discover that the creator of the earth and the sea was with them. And that's true for us as we discover that in all the storms that come our way, that God is with us, wanting us to look to him to restore our fearful hearts. Where is your faith? He asks his disciples. Amen. Thank you, Anita. So let's affirm our, our faith together as we say, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth are named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In a moment, Sue is going to lead us in our prayers, but I wonder, Sue, could you bring the pebble pool out at the same time? That'd be okay. Thank you, Sue. That's a bit full, isn't it? <laughs> Let's just pray. We've been reminded by Anita that uh, as those disciples cried out to God uh, and as they called to Jesus, they discovered that he was the one who was sovereign over all creation. And so, Father, as we bring this, this pebble pool uh, with these, prayer, these stones that represent the prayers of different people. We pray that as we cry out to you, you would in your mercy hear our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. When I say those for whom we pray, please respond, we place into your hands. For those for whom we pray, we, we place, place into your, your hands. hands. As we pray for the church throughout the world, we pray especially for Christian communities in Ukraine, in the midst of huge uncertainty, and pray that they and we may pray find our hope, our confidence, and our joy in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray for our bishops, Stephen and Gavin, for wisdom, courage, and faith as they lead and serve the church in this diocese. For those for whom we pray, we place in your hands. We give thanks for the beauty of creation, and we pray for all who work to preserve and to take care of it. Those who work in the forests and woodlands, the rivers and the lakes, and in the areas of outstanding beauty. We pray too for those involved in mountain and sea rescues. For those for whom we pray, 
we place into your hands. We pray for the nations of the world. We especially remember those displaced by war, famine, conflict, and persecution. We pray for those seeking refuge and asylum around the world, including on our own shores. We pray for a spirit of generosity, hospitality, and grace to be extended to those whose lives are lived at the very margins of hope. For those for whom we pray, we place into your hands. We give thanks for our family and friends and for our local community. We pray for our council and all serve, who serve on it, for those who are in a new, for those who are new to this area, for schools and colleges, for Stanbridge House and our care homes, and for the hospital. We pray particularly for all those on half-term breaks. Those for whom we pray, we place into your hands. As we remember those who are sick or in any kind of need, we especially pray for Will, Anna, Jade, Janet, and any others known to us. We pray that each may know the healing presence of Christ and the comfort of the Spirit. For those for whom we pray, we place into your hands. We pray for all who are bereaved at this time, any known to us, and especially the families of Chris, that they may know a sense of peace in the midst of the storm of grief. For those for whom we pray, we place into your hands. Gracious Father, who hears the cry of our hearts before a word is spoken, hear our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share that peace with one another. Peace too to those at home. So in obedience to our Lord's command, we take this bread and this cup. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine 
may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And so with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. In times of hope, in times of trouble, in times of sorrow and in times of joy, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Pray to the body of Christ to keep you in eternal life.
Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This blessing comes from the Northumbria community. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into your doors. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So we continue in that theme of creation with our final hymn, O Lord our God, when I in awesome wonder consider all, all the things your hands have made. So let's stand to sing. 